nice. Okay, we're, we're starting off with a really easy question. Like, okay. Tell us, what's your name and what are you doing here? Uh, my name is John Sasso. I'm here with uh, Channel Fireball running Flesh and Blood World Championships 2022. And uh, I am holding the Command and Conquer Premier Card Grading PCG 95. We'll be giving this away at premiercardgrading.com. Just submit a card, a uh, flesh and blood card, during the month of November, and you have a chance to win this card, the Marvel from Dynasty in a 9.5. Wow, awesome. Yep. What, what has been your favorite moment so far this weekend? Oh, this, I mean, it's always just all the players coming together and having a great time playing, you know, the game that they love. Uh, I'd say, like, the cosplayers to me, I think are just incredible. Obviously, the characters and the lore of Flesh and Blood is so strong, and the cosplayers are really great at, like, embodying that in real life. You know, you see him here, you see Prism just walking down the aisle, it's incredible. All right. Yeah, you uh, were telling me earlier the day, like, Channel Fireball was sold to TCG Player. Tell me a little bit about it. Sure. Yeah, so uh, a few months ago, we sold Channel Fireball to TCG Player. Uh, it's a big change for all of us here at, at Channel Fireball, obviously. Uh, my, many of our staff is working at TCG Player. Uh, some of us are working in our new company, Card Shop Live. But certainly a, a big change for, for a lot of us in one way or the other. Uh, Channel Fireball is something we started uh, about 13 years ago. And uh, never thought we'd sell it, but you know, hey, it all kind of worked out. And you know, now we're here with a new chapter with Card Shop Live and Premier Card Grading. Yeah. You're good. I'll, I'll keep an eye out for you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, and um, yeah, tell me a little bit about the year. There were so much big flesh and blood events in the US. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, flesh and blood is incredible. I mean, I, I, it's continued to just wow me every year we've been involved with it pretty much right since the beginning and the amount of players the amount of players that come out to these events uh you know as the world is getting comfortable uh coming back to events has been amazing we've run uh six events overall for flesh and blood over the last two years and the community is just incredible like it's it's such a great vibe in the room everyone's so excited to be here and you know meeting people that they'd only known online and now they get to see them in real life it's been it's been a lot of fun people from all over the world you know obviously here at the world championships and earlier this year in new jersey for the first pro tour it's been it's been an absolute pleasure to uh work with this community and work with uh legend story studios james and his whole team for how long do you know james what's the connection between you two so I, I originally was introduced uh, to James from my partners in New Zealand at Binder POS. Uh, they had a mutual connection. We had already started carrying Flesh and Blood on ChannelFireball.com. Uh, one of our employees actually heard about it, told me about it. We picked up some boxes and pretty soon our entire team was playing Flesh and Blood in the break room. And this was before many people knew about it. Uh, I met James and his team and I was so impressed with their vision for the game. They really cared about the players. They really cared about the long-term growth of the game and the community. And I think we've seen with these events, with all the things that James does, it's and, and the whole company does, they really do genuinely care about the game, the longevity of it, and you know, collectability, and just everything that goes into really making a game that's gonna last. How will you be involved in Flesh and Blood in the next year? Do you know it? I don't, I don't know yet. I'm not sure. I mean, we'll always be involved in some way or the other. I mean, I am a huge fan of James White. I'm a huge fan of this community. And I think, you know, the future remains to be seen. Uh, but yeah, we've been very, very thankful for the opportunity to work with James and the Legend Story Studios team and the Flesh and Blood community over the last couple of years. Um, yeah, question I want to continue on is a little bit more about yourself because you told me we are in San Jose yeah. and you are from around here. Tell me. Sure, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really awesome to have an event here in San Jose. I grew up in Cupertino, about 10 minutes from here. I lived in San Jose up until a few years ago, so it's really a hometown event. A lot of people that have come to our store for the last 30 years uh, are at the event. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's great to be here and, you know, know all the restaurants around and a lot of the friends that, that I have. I gotta, I gotta go drop this off at the PCG booth here. There you go, Alex. Take care of that one. That's, uh, <laughs> that's the big one. <laughs> All right, uh, but yeah, no, it's been it's been a lot of fun, you know, being at, at you know this event, last event for the year, and uh, you know in our hometown, so it's great. Yeah, 
Now uh, I have a question about Flesh and Blood for you because um, what I want to know is what's your favorite card and how often do you f uh, play Flesh and Blood yourself? So, so let's see, my favorite card, I'd say my favorite card is Mavrian Skies. So we've been doing a lot with live box breaks and when we were doing Flesh and Blood, the, big, the new set was Crucible of War and for whatever reason, Whenever we'd open Mavrian Skies, Mashi, who's our main box breaker, would sing Mavrian Skies! And like, it just kind of caught on. And now people at these events will come up to Mashi and say it to him. So I think that card for me is just kind of like a favorite card because of that interaction. Um, I don't actually play Flesh and Blood. I don't really play any of the card games anymore. Uh, most of my time is spent on business and with my family. Uh, but I definitely miss it and I, I definitely want to get back into it. I think when my kids are a little older, I'll certainly introduce them to Flesh and Blood. Awesome. Um, I want to know a little bit more about your background because um, you told me you are flying all over the world. You are working with Magic the Gathering sure. back then. Tell yeah. me a little bit about that. Sure. Uh, I got started in the industry in uh, 1993 uh, with sports cards. A uh, year after that, Magic the Gathering came out. Uh, and so I've been in the industry almost 30 years. Uh, we've done a lot of different things, you know, e-commerce, retail store, uh, content with Channel Fireball and then eventually we started running events through Channel Fireball which led to running all of the magic events throughout the world for about two and a half years until COVID put a stop to that but uh, running events I think was definitely the most fun that we had in this industry and you know I look forward to the opportunity to run more events and just do more with the Flesh and Blood community and the trading card game communities overall. Is there something from your Flesh and Blood time that you will carry on in your in your mind a memory or a time let's see i think so the, the first the first event that we did after the covid shutdown was a flesh and blood event in las vegas it was the tales of aria uh, world premiere event so it was a week before anyone had seen any of the cards and uh, the vibe in that room was so electric because it was the first thing a lot of people had done since being stuck in their houses for a year or longer, right? So it was the first real get together. And especially for Flesh and Blood because Flesh and Blood really got big during a lot of the lockdowns. So this community that had grown online during COVID has now, had, now had the opportunity to come together. And I'd say like that feeling in that room was something I'll never forget. It was really just why we run events is for the gathering of people together. And that one was so magical because, you know, it was the first time people had to do it and they were so excited to get back out there and meet all their new friends in this new community. Is there um, something that you learned along the way uh, for in the last two or three years that you want to talk about? Something I learned along the way. Uh, sure, yeah. So, I guess, being in business as long as I have, you're one of the earliest things I learned was to always continue learning. Like there's so many things to learn in your lifetime. And one of the biggest, like I think restrictions people put on themselves is that they already know everything. And so we, you know, we're always trying to learn, always trying to improve, never being content with what we do. Really what COVID did, the whole situation was you know, everything that you knew was now thrown out. You really have to look at everything in a new way and, uh, you know, look at everything in a new way, really focus on what can we do rather than what we can't do. Because in that situation, a lot of people, you know, were stuck at home, not able to work, not able to do the things they wanted to do. And what we really learned as a team was, let's focus on what we can do and do it as, as great as we can. So that's how we ended up getting into a lot of the online events, uh, a lot of like live box breaking, things like that. We're focused on, hey, what can we do? What can we still do to engage with the community? And uh, I think that was the biggest thing for me because we were <laughs> overnight thrown into a situation where if our business is gonna survive, we have to do things differently. And so always looking for the opportunity to learn. All right, I have um, a last question for you because uh, <clears throat> I'm coming from Germany, from yeah, Europe. Yeah. Um, are you looking at Europe at the community because Channel Fireball is not operating in Europe, but how, how are you looking at Europe? Do you have some words for Europeans that watch sure. this video? Yeah, I mean, so with, with CFB events, we ran events in Europe uh, for, I think, five years. 
And the community there, I mean, for Magic the Gathering was incredible. Like, very passionate people. Obviously, like, every country has a different style. Uh, I really enjoyed it personally, just being able to travel to all the different co countries there. And I would love the opportunity to run events again in Europe. Uh, or just you know be involved in, in different opportunities in Europe. But I, I miss it for sure. I love I love going to Copenhagen. I'd say that was my favorite favorite city to visit in uh, in all of uh, all of Europe. So it was it was a lot of fun. I got to go there a couple times. So yeah. All right, John. Thank you so much for taking the time and yeah. organizing all these awesome events. Of thank course. You. Hey, thank you for everything you do for the community. It's awesome, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Bye.